Faisal asks, where do you get your cool hats? Uh, I have two hats I wear usually in the videos and I got both of them for free from somewhere so you'll this is yours. I think he was talking about my kitten hat that I have and I go online and look for goofy things and I've do it I've done it since my daughter was little I used to do it to embarrass her. And as her. you can see she's pretty good at it. I, I like to embarrass her so just search online. Jim asks and it's kind of a personal question how often do you change your fluids? Oil, differential, oh, oil. Oh, okay. coolant. That's on the regs. I change after every off-roading event. Uh, we don't do that. Um, on the FJ, we're, we're running normal oil in the engine. So that's every 5,000 miles. Uh, differential and all that, 20,000, 30,000. On the uh, Forerunner, uh, we're actually... We have a program with our dealership right now where they take care of all the fluids for what the next hundred thousand? No, not hundred thousand. Fifty thousand? Something remember. like that. Anyways, that's synthetic too, and you can go ten thousand miles in between changes there. But uh, okay, what's next? Isosis. I'm sorry if I butchered that. From Instagram, wonders: Have you ever had any unforeseen maintenance with your builds? If so, what are the costliest things to maintain? And are the mods worth it in the long run if you use your vehicle as a daily driver? Uh, we haven't had anything go wrong. Um, yeah, nothing has caused any harm to other components um, that we know of. And I do drive this as my daily driver. Yeah, she drives this one as a daily driver. I put a ton of miles on the FJ. Um, one thing is when you do put on aftermarket parts, um, you need to periodically check the, the torque on the bolts and stuff, make sure nothing's loosening up. Once in a while, our skid plate bolts will loosen up, but that's no big deal. And uh, I just get under it, you know. I'm, I'm a nut for, you know, getting underneath it when I have nothing else to do and just checking bolts and nuts. Uh, other than that, really, it's... Uh, as long as you don't get too radical with your like with your suspension and that daily driving it is no big deal with a three inch uh, a good quality three inch lift um, like we have from Toy Tech it really uh, takes care of itself there's really no issues with it at all now if you were to go like long travel and and uh, when you go with tires larger in diameter than 33s, you go to 35s or 37s, then you're you're stressing uh, other components. But uh, yeah, with just a regular good quality three-inch lift, um, 33s. Yeah, I don't I don't think there's any problems at all with that. And the bumpers and the armor and stuff, it does uh, add some weight, definitely, and it does affect your fuel economy. Um, but with all our armor, steel armor, steel bumpers, uh, skid uh, um, sliders and all that, we're still getting 16 and a half on this one, on the 4Runner. Um, on our FJ, since it is, you're trying to push a brick through the air, it's down to around 14 miles to the gallon, 14 and a half maybe on the highway. But we expected that. And you should expect that once you start adding weight, uh, the heavier tires and that. Expect your fuel economy to go down a little bit, but small price to pay. Mark asks, have you guys had any crazy experiences taking your build to Toyota? God, why can't I do this? You're reading it. Mark asks, have you guys had any crazy experiences taking your builds to Toyota dealerships in the past? No, we're pretty lucky. We have a great dealership right by us. We do, and which is, from what I understand, is pretty uncommon. Uh, yeah, with our with our Forerunner, they kind of get a kick out of every time we bring in the Forerunner for service. It's got some new mod, and uh, yeah, they kind of get a kick out of seeing what we've done to it. Um, and on our FJ, this is back before we even started building it. Back it was around 100,000 miles on it. We take it in. It started shuddering a little bit at around 45 to 55 miles an hour. Take it in. 
and we did have the extended warranty took it in and uh, it turned out it was the output shaft bearing and seal were bad on the transmission and then they had a warranty expert come in and take a look and tell them what to do and he told them don't bother putting a new bearing in it just give them a new transmission so yeah that was kind of cool at 100,000 miles we got a free new transmission in it yay Toyota Okay, the next question comes from a screen name that he likes to eat poo. I like, I like eat poop. I like eat poo. That's probably a unique a, one. Probably has a dog. He, he asks, why did you choose the FJ and 4Runner over a pickup? I own an FJ and my girlfriend is looking to pick up a Tacoma or a Tundra soon. We have also been considering a three-row forerunner. Mark wanted a pickup. I wanted a t uh, Tacoma TRD. And since for, I drive it one. every day, I didn't want one. I wanted a forerunner. Well, I really wanted another FJ, but I yeah. settled for a four. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we would have bought another FJ if they would have, if they were still made them, but uh, we chose the forerunner, and I'm really happy we did because the the shorter wheelbase on the forerunner, I think, is it really comes in handy the Tacoma's a bit longer and and they don't struggle on the trails but they do have to do you know a little bit more turns on some switchbacks and stuff uh, than we do with the shorter wheelbase and I mean it's all enclosed in the back we it's kind of hard to haul drywall in the back of a forerunner that's kind of why I wanted the Tacoma but well the dogs wouldn't have been happy in the back no they would have flown out they're so little Michael asks, what tools are essential to keep in the vehicle versus what are nice to have? What components do you prepare for braking, failing on the FJ when off-roading, if any? Well, tools, they're all nice to have if you need them. Yeah, but you can't take everything, and tools do weigh a lot of, a lot of pounds. So we take um, a full uh, three-quarter inch ratchet set a full quarter inch ratchet set, a full set of combination wrenches, pliers, vice grips, uh, screwdrivers, uh, duct tape, zip ties, uh, all kinds, of, we'll, we should probably do a video on that someday. But anyways, for breakage, now we don't bring any spare parts when we run the Forerunner because we don't really beat on it that much. Uh, we, well, and it's new. And it's new. Uh, but uh, on the on the FJ, when we take it out, we do more, you know, harder stuff with that rock crawling and stuff. So we do bring a spare CV axle with it and a, and a spare wheel bearing and hub assembly. And with that, bringing that, then you have to bring the tools to change it out. We have a slide hammer to pull the old axle out. We've got the, the big ass... Uh, axle nut you have to have uh, breaker bars we have a, a piece of pipe for an extension on the breaker bar to get the tough ones loose uh, yeah maybe we'll do a video on that someday next up is Moochzilla and I think he's given us a what? he says oh, do, that. do you still drive the Wait, FJ it's so windy the camera is shaking back and forth okay go on it's okay do you still drive the FJ or is it parked and forgotten? It's parked most of the time. It's not a daily driver anymore. It's in the garage and I see it every day. And it's first first thing I look at when, when I go in our shop is I look over and, and there it is in all of its splendor. Uh, we, we take it out when we need to uh, get groceries or go to the mall. <laughs> we take it. We take it out. We do. We do. But it's got... It's got uh, about 250,000 miles on it, and uh, the suspension and the drive, uh, and uh, drive, no, not drive shaft, the, the axles are all new in the suspension, and a lot of, there's a lot of new components on it, but uh, still has the original engine, original transfer case, trans, or, uh, no, the transmission is a 100,000 newer, but yeah, it's showing its age a little bit, so we don't take it too far away. Well, plus they don't make them anymore. We got to save yeah, we'll say, it. We're I want keep that, that to last forever. for a while. Yeah, we'll get rid of this one before we get rid of the FJ. From Dylan, which build was more fun, and which build cost more? 
Hmm. Well, they've both been fun. I really like the FJ, and I liked cutting bolts off of the off of the frame. Um, I didn't. <laughs> I loved it when rust fell in my face. No, but I really liked I liked the FJ, but I, I've enjoyed this too. Uh, I think the FJ was a little bit more fun for me because it was new, something new. Um, although the the Forerunner is fun because all it's brand freaking new. I mean, when we started on it, it only had like 5,000 miles on it, and all the bolts come out without snapping, no rust. No, it's pretty freaking awesome. And which one was more expensive? Probably this one because we've done a few more mods than we did to the FJ. Uh, I say the FJ because we replaced a lot of worn parts because of the miles on it. Um, yeah, we replaced a lot of stuff on it. that, uh, And it was really surprising. We, we took out like the wheel bearings and the lower control arms and you know to get the new ball joints and all this and that. And it was surprising how little they were worn with all those miles on it. The stock components just last a long time. I was happy with that. Surprised. From NV, which one performs better, the FJ Cruiser or the Forerunner? Uh, it depends on what you mean by perform. Uh, going down the roads and even gravel roads and such, uh, probably the Forerunner. Um, off road, the FJ Cruiser, hands down, uh, primarily because of the mud trains that we have on it, the tires, and the short wheelbase. But, I mean, they, they have the same suspension under them. I mean, basically the same suspension. The only difference is uh, Forerunner weighs a little bit more. Pro I don't know, maybe. I shouldn't say that because I don't know for sure. It is definitely a little longer, uh, but still shorter than a four-door uh, Jeep. <laughs> oh, oh no, I didn't. Are you eating chocolate? I am. And wine. Okay. I know how to camp. Yeah, you do. Kevin asks, why get a TR4... Kevin asks, why get a T4R when you already had a well-modified FJ? Uh, we buy a new vehicle every five or six years. Because... Uh, Mary drives a lot of miles to work. She drives what, a total of about three hours both ways each day, or at least four days a week. So we need a, a nice, new, dependable vehicle. And uh, I don't know. Why not? Yeah, why not? Yeah, come on. <laughs> Get off our case, man. We wanted to, all right? Okay, coming up, I have three that are similar. Um, OKT for RCPL. Tony. And Jay, the first one, how do you plan your trips and what's your favorite drink at the campsite? Beer. Wine. How do you find all the cool trips? I'm just starting out and need the info. Help me. Uh, the internet. Thank God for the internet. We, before, when we used to do uh, canoeing ex expeditions all over the country and Canada, we started 30 years ago before there was good internet. And we had to depend on mail. mail, snail mail. Oh my God, it took like six months to, to plan a, a trip. And yeah, but yeah, we, we just go online and find, uh, in fact, we're gonna be covering that question in an upcoming video, probably the next video that comes out after this. Uh, on this trip we're doing right now, we are, we're, answering a lot of these questions also um the book uh um atlas obscura atlas obscura yeah it's got some weird stuff in it some weird roadside attractions and stuff just things to kind of break up the monotony of a road trip it's kind of fun what's the next so you say you have three of them kind yeah of the and the next one is what got you into overlanding in the first place and were you both on board in the beginning oh well, we can answer that now We've been, we're, we're those people that have been overlanding forever, <laughs> but we didn't actually know what there was a term for it. Yeah, we've been traveling all over the country uh, since we got married 30-some years ago. Started out with, uh, what did we start out with? Oh, an old Chevy pickup, short bed, piece of crap. 
and a camper. And then yeah, we and the started backpacking. Behind camper, and then, yeah, backpacking. And, and that was just too hard. Yeah. <laughs> so then we started canoeing. Yeah, canoe canoe camping where you don't actually carry the, your gear on your back. We and, did that for years and years. And then I thought this would be kind of cool. So I actually... She did. She came up with the build. With the build ideas. Proposed this to Mark. Yeah. And it's been fun. It has been. It's been awesome. What's the next one? Um, this, this is a, a long this one. is a separate one. This is a book. This is a separate one. Is it a separate? Okay. All right. Go for it. Mm -hmm.